Welcome to Fantasy Audiobook, Chapter 36, Title of Superman. Some things were delayed yesterday, so I didn't come back. Carl recalled old memories, before the parents in this world passed away, as Gwen's neighbor, his parents had a very good relationship with Gwen's parents. It's okay, my mother also said that if she sees you today, she will invite you to our house for dinner. Gwen put her little hands behind her back and blinked playfully. Carl looked at Gwen's pretty face, and after reacting, he said, if there are no special circumstances, I will definitely go. I remember Mr. Carl, you seem to work in Queens, right? If you leave work earlier than I leave school, you can come and wait for me at the gate of our school. How about we come back together by then? Gwen blushed, looked up into Carl's clear eyes, and made a bold request. Come back together, but I only have motorcycles, if you don't mind Gwen. Definitely don't mind, the motorcycle is actually quite good. Gwen shook her head, apparently not caring about such things. All right then, I'll wait for you at the gate of your school. It's Midtown Science High School, right? Yup, dot dot dot. After a brief chat with Gwen, Carl went to work. While driving the motorcycle, Carl clicked on the storage space of the system. The female assistant's extraction card obtained from the previous mission was quietly lying in the storage space of the system. Carl clicked on the details of this drawing card and read its introduction carefully. Open black lens bracket female assistant draw card close black lens bracket. Introduction. You can choose one of the following characters as your assistant. Available roles. Catwoman. Optional role. Invisible woman. Optional role. Mercy. Optional role. Tifa Lockhart. Dot dot dot. Seeing clearly the characters that can be selected in the drawing card, Carl's expression became weird. Catwoman and Invisible Woman are two candidates Carl can understand, after all, both of them are characters in the American comics world. Katifa and Mercy, Carl remembers that they are not the characters in the 3D anime. System, the characters in this anime can also be selected as female assistants. They don't seem to be from the American comics world, do they? Answer to the host, Tifa and Mercy are game characters. Close black lens bracket. A. Carl's face froze, as if he had exposed something just now. In fact, character draw cards of the type similar to draw cards have a chance to appear characters from non-American comics worlds, so this probability is normal. Close black lens bracket. I see. After the host selects characters, when the characters are summoned to this world, these characters will offer their bodies and hearts to the host. Close black lens bracket. Really, Carl understood what the system meant. Then, Carl's eyes slowly focused on the last optional character. First of all, Carl definitely wouldn't have chosen someone from the American comics world. Because they all live in the American comics world, Carl has already met Catwoman, will the day when he meets the Invisible Woman be far behind? So in Carl's opinion, choosing a character from the American comics world is the most unwise. Since drawing cards can summon people from other worlds, Carl will naturally choose people from other worlds first. There is a good saying. The West cannot live without Jerusalem. Carl doesn't need hesitation at all. After the character is selected, the system only gives the words that the character is being summoned and asks Carl to wait. At this time, Carl also parked the motorcycle at the parking spot downstairs of the clinic. If it hadn't been for the promise that Gwen would pick her up at the school gate today, Carl wouldn't even have the idea of driving a motorcycle. Carl can now fly directly if he wants to go to work, or he can run at high speed like the Flash. These means of transportation on the Blue Star. Carl is actually very tasteless, and he can definitely play with it when he is definitely free. When going to work is the rush hour with the most traffic on the road, and it is easy to get stuck in traffic, Carl doesn't want to waste his time on this. Carl was also surprised to see Harley standing at the door of the clinic lobby. Who would have thought that after experiencing the dangers of Gotham City yesterday, Harley could come so early? Looking at Harley like this, it's like nothing happened. As expected of a psychiatrist, this kind of psychological quality is indeed much stronger than that of ordinary people. In fact, after experiencing yesterday's kidnapping by the Riddler, Harley rushed back to NY overnight. Harley, who looked left and right, saw Carl walking into the clinic and immediately walked up to him. Sticking his head out against Carl's body, Harley was sniffing Carl's scent. Harley, are you? Carl couldn't help taking a step back. Harley always feels like a puppy. 
Sure enough. Harley stood still, tapped his palms lightly, and made a sure voice. Carl, I didn't expect you and that Superman to wear the same perfume. Dot ha. Carl assured him that he was definitely not wearing any perfume. Generally speaking, men use perfume basically to cover up their body odor. But Carl doesn't smell much, so naturally he doesn't wear any perfume. I don't wear perfume, but then again, Harley, the Superman you're referring to is. Harley looked at Carl in astonishment. Dr. Carl, why don't you pay more attention to the news? Didn't I tell you last night that the mutant in the black battle suit saved me? Later, netizens on the internet named him the heroic title, Superman, which many people agreed with, so everyone started calling him Superman. Carl was stunned, and at the same time felt the wonder of fate. I didn't expect that I won the title of Superman under such circumstances. When that Superman rescued me yesterday, I smelled a good smell on him, and you have exactly the same smell as Superman. Harley stared at Carl, because of the passive hypnotic ability brainwaves, she it really doesn't feel like Carl is Superman. Carl also understood when he heard this, and he raised a finger and explained solemnly, according to expert research, when a person has no fragrance on him, but you can smell the fragrance on others, it actually means that you your genes and your body chose each other. Carl's serious explanation made Harley sink into deep thought. Carl, what you said seems to make a little sense. Dot but I don't have any feelings for Superman. Harley said depressed, and suddenly realized. Dr. Carl, you really know how to play tricks. Harley rolled his eyes at Carl, pursed his lips, and turned around and walked into his own consulting room with Carl's smile on his face. Quote dot dot dot, what am I playing tricks on? Carl pondered for a while, only then did he realize that there seemed to be something wrong with what he just said. Miss Harley, is this embarrassing? That's really strange. Carl was amazed, so Westerners are also emotionally shy. Chapter 37 After chatting with Harley, Carl went back to his consulting room. Just sitting on the chair at the desk, the system also issued a daily task. Like yesterday's daily task, Carl also needs to give a patient psychological counseling treatment. It's just that the rewards for this mission are completely different from yesterday's. Daily task. Complete psychological counseling treatment for a patient. Task reward, 500 points. Close black lens bracket. Ha, huh, is it different from yesterday's task reward? What is the use of this point? As soon as doubts appeared in Carl's mind, a systematic explanation emerged in his mind. It turns out that the functions of the system have not been fully activated. After Carl triggers a special task, the system will perform a version upgrade. The updated system will open the system point mall, and Carl can buy various things in the point mall. So, this point is quite valuable. After Carl understood the function of points, there was a knock on the door of the consulting room. The front desk knocked lightly on the door of the clinic, and slowly pushed the door open after obtaining Carl's permission. Looking at Carl sitting at the desk, the front desk reacted and said, Dr. Carl, this lady claims to be your assistant. She is here to report today and is ready to go to work. After the assistant finished speaking, his eyes once again focused on the woman standing beside him who could be called a true goddess. They are both women, but the girl standing beside her is not only tall, but also has beautiful facial features. The female receptionist felt that this woman was prettier than the boss Harley, she had never seen such a beautiful person. Most importantly, she also has a perfect plump figure, and her voice is very gentle and pleasant. The female receptionist was very envious, and at the same time, she also understood why this Dr. Carl looked down on her. Looking at that pretty face, the female receptionist feels like she is dreaming now. I can't imagine that someone's facial features can be so perfect. I feel ashamed just standing next to her. Dr. Carl's aesthetics are really vicious. The person standing next to the female receptionist is Tifa summoned from the drawing card. Carl's eyes fell on Tifa at the moment as well. Looking at the glamorous and mature Tifa, Carl was also amazed by Tifa's beautiful face. In the past, he always saw the 3D modeling image on the screen. Now, after seeing the real person, Carl couldn't help giving a thumbs up to the female assistant he chose. Tifa was wearing a lady's business suit, and her figure belonged to the slim and plump type. Under this lady's professional suit, Tifa's figure can be said to be displayed flawlessly. Especially those slender legs wrapped in black silk. Definitely a full plus. Carl looked up, 
Antifa's smooth black hair was not pulled back, but fell on her slender waist, exuding an intellectual beauty. This style of dressing is definitely the type that can make most men's blood boil. Dr. Carl. Tifa's burgundy eyes fell on Carl, and she saluted him very politely. Carl nodded and stood up with a smile. Miss Tifa, since you're here, I can take you to the boss to sign the contract. Hearing the conversation between the two, the female receptionist turned and left in a very witty manner. Dot dot dot. In Harley Quinn's office, Harley's eyes were fixed on Tifa. She never expected that the female assistant selected by Carl could be so beautiful. In which talent market is this the best talent selected? The face is unbelievably beautiful, and the figure is also ridiculously good. Damn it, why are her breasts so much bigger than her own? Damn Carl, is he picking a female assistant or a wife? Harley growled inwardly, but at the same time felt helpless. In the end, they had to come up with a contract and signed a labor contract with Tifa. Harley knew that even if she didn't sign a contract with Tifa, she would become Carl's assistant. Capturing the way Tifa looked at Carl, her intuition as a woman told her that Tifa seemed to have a difficult relationship with Carl. As a smart woman, Harley naturally wouldn't take the initiative to ask these things. Definitely, mostly Harley doesn't care about this kind of thing either. Harley collected himself and smiled softly, Miss Tifa, welcome to the Harley Clinic. Thank you. Boss Harley will take care of you in the future. Tifa smiled and extended her hand to shake Harley. Even if the two get to know each other easily. Seeing this, Carl said in a timely manner, since the contract has been signed, come back to the consultation room with me and I will start working soon. Carl saw a patient passing by outside the aisle and that direction was exactly where his consulting room was. Obviously, this patient came to Carl for psychological counseling. Staring at the figures of the two people who disappeared into his office, Harley folded his arms and leaned against the back of the chair and began to think about one thing. Should I be more proactive? Carl is indeed an excellent man, with a handsome appearance and a good figure, and he has made a lot of achievements in the field of psychology that he is good at. Such an excellent man, Harley naturally liked it. Definitely, such an excellent man will also have many competitors at the same time, Harley thought of Tifa, and suddenly felt that he should have a deeper understanding of how many beautiful women Carl has around him. Chapter 38 Today Carl sees more than 10 patients. Some of these patients suffer from depression, while others suffer from emotional breakdown caused by too much stress in life. Definitely, some patients do have some mental problems. Carl patiently counseled them one by one, and also prescribed some medicine for them to go back to take. As Carl's assistant, Tifa's performance at work for the first time today is indeed satisfactory. Tifa wasn't very familiar with psychotherapy, but she was there to help Carl whenever he asked her to. After receiving the last patient of the day, Carl leaned back in his chair and enjoyed today's sunshine leisurely. The efficiency of absorbing the yellow sun's rays on the ground is indeed inferior to the growth rate after passing through the atmosphere and soaking in the sunlight. But with Carl's current physical fitness, sunbathing on the ground is actually the best choice. Before Carl was floating in the outer space of the planet to bask in the sun, that distance is actually the limit that Carl can get close to the sun at present. If the sun is too close, Carl's cells are at risk of being exploded by energy and going to death. In the DC comics, Superman is not without the energy of the yellow sun. Only when his physical fitness improves to a certain level, can Carl gradually close the distance between himself and the sun. Step by step is actually the most correct way for Superman to grow. Looking at Carl who seemed to be resting with his eyes slightly closed, Tifa who was standing beside Carl tactfully did not disturb him. A few minutes later, Carl's voice sounded in the consulting room. Tifa, you mentioned that you own a bar in the previous chat. Yes, Master Carl, Dr. Carl, I do have a bar, and the business of the bar has been entrusted to a friend to take care of it. Tifa gently brushed a strand of hair from her temples behind her ear and responded softly Carl. Carl nodded. On the surface, his expression didn't change, but in fact, he was surprised by the power of the female assistant's drawing card. I thought that the female assistant's drawing card was to summon characters from other worlds to this world out of thin air. Katifa's description of her own situation let Carl know that he was wrong. The female assistant drawing card can not only summon people into this world, but also arrange their identities and memories reasonably. In this world, 
Tifa not only opened a bar of her own, but also had some friends. The drawing card reasonably arranges characters from other worlds to appear in this world, so that no one can notice the slightest abnormality. It was as if Tifa had always lived in this world. When he came back to his senses, Carl looked at the time, and it was already time to get off work, okay, Tifa, let's stop here today. You can get off work, and I have to pack up and go home. When Tifa heard this, she immediately bowed and nodded, Dr. Carl, then I'll go back first. Seeing the back of Tifa about to leave the consultation room, Carl suddenly said, tomorrow is a weekend, Tifa, I will go to your bar then. Tifa paused, and she turned around with a joyful smile on her face, then it's settled, I will personally cook for you, Dr. Carl. Ro, after Tifa left, Carl simply tidied up the office. He is now heading to Midtown Science High School. Gwen Stacy and her mother invited Carl over for dinner this evening. Naturally, Carl can't live up to the kindness of others. Neighbors can't see each other without looking up and down. It's not good not to be invited by others. Dot dot dot. In front of Midtown Science High School, Carl took off his helmet and parked the cool motorcycle he was riding aside. Carl appeared at the gate of the high school, which attracted the attention of many students. The male students focus most of their attention on Carl's motorcycle. And the attention of those young and beautiful female students, all focused on the handsome and handsome Carl. Even though Carl is wearing casual clothes, some female students with vicious eyes can clearly feel Carl's perfect and stylish figure under the clothes. Staring at the gate of Midtown Science High School, Carl hadn't seen Gwen yet, but a boy with a camera in his hands and black-rimmed glasses on his face caught his attention. Is he Peter Parker? Hearing the names shouted by the students around Peter Parker, Carl frowned slightly. The famous Spider-Man in his previous life, one of the most well-known superheroes in American comics, now seems to be a fledgling kid. Compared with the Peter Parker seen on the screen, the Peter in this world is undoubtedly younger, and the immature color that has not faded still remains on his face. Looking at the lonely figure of Peter Parker, Carl couldn't help but recall his childhood memories. The first super English movie that Carl came into contact with was Spider-Man, and it was also Toby's version of Spider-Man. Toby's version of the Spider-Man trilogy is considered to have opened up Carl's interest in super English movies. Later Carl came into contact with Garfield's version of the extraordinary Spider-Man. Compared with the Toby trilogy with a more perfect ending. The tragic ending of the extraordinary Spider-Man is even more memorable to Carl. Came back to his senses, Carl looked at the Peter Parker who hadn't become a Spider-Man in the distance and didn't intend to bother him. Gwen also walked out of the school gate with a stack of books at this time. After looking around, Gwen followed the gazes of the female students around him, and quickly determined Carl's location. Looking at Carl leaning on the motorcycle, Gwen trotted to Carl with the textbooks in his arms. Mr. Carl, I kept you waiting. Gwen had a bright smile on her face, she didn't expect Carl to be such a punctual person. It's okay, I just arrived, let's go, get in the car, and go home. Carl handed the helmet in his hand to Gwen. Okay. After Gwen straddled Carl's motorcycle, she stretched out her hands and hugged Carl's waist from behind. Feeling Carl's strong figure, Gwen's face flushed slightly. Gwen could feel Carl's hard, lumpy abs even with his clothes on. Does Mr. Carl usually exercise? Gwen couldn't help thinking in his mind. In Gwen's wild thoughts, the two stopped in front of an intersection with traffic lights. Looking at the intersection that just turned into a red light ahead, Carl turned his head and looked around boredly. Then, his eyes suddenly focused on the luxurious sports car on the left. Definitely, the sports car isn't what attracts Carl, it's mainly the presence of the luxury sports car. This look, is actually Tony Stark. Chapter 39. Carl was quite familiar with the figure sitting on the sports car. In the previous life, before the rise of Marvel movies, Iron Man was only a second and third tier character in the comics. Later, Downey starred in Tony Stark, abruptly turning this second-line character in the comics into one of the world's famous superheroes. It is also due to the success of the movie universe that Iron Man's name is known to more and more people. In this world, Tony Stark, unlike Norman Osborn and Bruce Wayne, has not yet become Iron Man. As a playboy, he often appears on the programs of major TV stations. Therefore, not only Carl was familiar with Tony Stark, 
but even Gwen, who was sitting behind Carl, recognized the world's most famous super arms dealer. Perhaps sensing Carl's gaze, Tony, who was holding the steering wheel with one hand, also moved his gaze to Carl who was riding a motorcycle. Taking off the sunglasses on his face, Tony stroked his forehead gently, and said to Carl with a headache, I know you recognize me, you are my fan, I know that. Normally, I should give you an autograph, right? But unfortunately, I have important things to do right now, so I'm not interested in signing autographs with you or anything like that. Tony Stark gave Carl a hard time. Even Gwen Stacy, sitting on Carl's fender, couldn't help but get a few black lines on her forehead. Although Gwen also recognized Tony Stark, she didn't have any affection for this kind of playboy, and Carl didn't seem to be a fan of Tony. Carl gave him a casual look, and it turned out that Tony Stark could think so much. Gwen had to admire Tony Stark's amazing brain power. Carl knew very well what Tony Stark was now. Before becoming Iron Man and experiencing the big events that affected him, Tony was indeed an out-and-out -out playboy and an arms dealer with no conscience. Carl doesn't even bother to talk to him now. Glancing at the red light in the distance that was about to turn green, Carl was about to shift gears and turn off the motorcycle accelerator to go home. Suddenly, a system notification sounded in my ears. Is this triggering the mission? Carl's expression didn't change much. Because Carl has basically figured out the triggering rule of this system task in his body. To put it simply, as long as Carl meets a superhero in the American comics world, there is a high probability that the task will be triggered. After several days of research, Carl found two ways to increase the progress of the Superman template integrate. The first way is to contact characters like superhero to trigger system tasks. The second method is simple. Killing the supervillain directly can also increase the integration progress of the Superman template. Carl didn't know if it was because the Riddler he had killed was too weak, but killing him himself only increased the steel-bodied Superman's integration progress by 0.1%. The benefits of stretching the hips did not arouse Carl's slightest interest. Therefore, Carl plans to develop for a period of time, and then pick some stronger villains to kill them to see if they can increase the income. There are many powerful villains in the world of American comics. When he came back to his senses, Carl's eyes moved to the mission that had just been released in front of him. Open black lens bracket ding. Trigger the mission. Please go to the cave in the Middle East to rescue Tony Stark after 30 days. Close black lens bracket. Mission completion reward. Steel body Superman template integrate progress increased by 0.2%. Silver Superman template integrate progress increased by 0.2%. Is there a total of 0.4% of the integration progress? The reward is unexpectedly higher than the male superhero I met before. Could it be the reason why Tony Stark is the protagonist of the movie universe? Tony who was holding the steering wheel of the sports car, finally noticed the change in Carl's expression. Clever Tony immediately realized that he might have misunderstood something. Just when Tony was about to explain, Tony suddenly saw a trace of pity for him in the eyes of the man on the motorcycle. This look made Tony uncomfortable, he didn't know if the other person was expressing pity or sympathy for him. In short, when Tony came back to his senses, Carl had already disappeared with that beautiful student girl. All that was left was Tony sitting messy in the stroke of his sports car. Dot dot dot. Gwen's house was busier than ever today. This is because Carl came to Gwen's house as a guest. Through chatting with Gwen's family members, Carl also learned about the situation in Gwen's family. In addition to her and her parents, there are two very lively younger brothers in Gwen's family, but the two younger brothers are much younger than Gwen. It is worth mentioning that Gwen's father is no stranger to Carl. The last time Carl met Gwen's father was during the bank robbery incident. It's just that Carl didn't recognize him at the time. Gwen's father is George Stacy, who is the chief of the NY Police Department. On the surface, George is a middle-aged man with a serious complexion, but after getting along carefully, Carl discovered that George also has a kind side. Chapter 40 George's kindness is basically only shown in front of his daughter Gwen. When talking with Carl, George basically looked serious, and he didn't know what kind of attitude and thoughts he was holding. Thinking of George's experience, Carl actually admires this man very much. Ordinary people in the American comics world are basically powerless against superheroes, let alone those powerful villains who can deal with superheroes. 
Every time a police officer goes out on a mission, the coefficient of encountering life-threatening danger is much, much higher than in the normal world. In the extraordinary Spider-Man world, George died at the hands of Dr. Connors, the lizard man, because he had to perform his duties as a police officer. Although it was the first time for Carl to be a guest at someone's house, he didn't feel uncomfortable. At this moment, some news about what happened last night began to be played on the dining table behind them. Originally, these news made Carl not have much psychological change, but until he appeared on the TV screen wearing a black Superman battle suit. Gwen's two younger brothers were obviously very interested in Superman's news, and the two, who were bored while eating dinner, were now watching TV with great interest. Gwen's mother couldn't help asking, George, how is it? Have you tracked down this Superman? George's face froze, thinking of the media's evaluation of the NY police during the morning news, he felt inexplicably sullen. Gwen seemed to see that George was a little blocked, so she comforted, Father, in fact, things may not be that bad in my opinion. Maybe Superman just wants to help the police fight criminals. George frowned, put down the knife and fork in his hand, and said, it's our police's job to fight criminals, not the job of these so-called superheroes. What's more, this guy who everyone calls a superhero can only be called an anti-hero in my opinion. Using your own ability to take the lives of others without going through legal legal procedures is also a crime. Carl didn't have any psychological fluctuations, he didn't think there was anything wrong with what he did. Thoughts, this world is a world where strength speaks. The fact that George could say this was based on how little he knew about the world as an ordinary person. The more George learned about the world, the more he realized that sometimes the best way to deal with these criminals is to have power over power. Seemingly aware that the atmosphere seemed a bit dignified, Gwen immediately changed the subject with a smile. George came back to his senses, looked at everyone present, and knew that he had said too much. Carl took over the topic that Gwen had transferred, and soon chatted with everyone, talking and laughing. Carl and the Gwen family get along very well. A dinner is over quickly. Bathed in the refreshing night breeze, Carl and Gwen were taking a walk outside. According to Gwen, walking around after eating helps digestion. On weekdays, Gwen's father George would basically not allow her to go out after dinner. Because NY City at night is far more dangerous than during the day, if some young girls go out at night, they are easily targeted by some gangsters. George, who is in charge of security in NY, knows this very well. But considering Carl's strength, George allowed Gwen to go out for a walk for the first time today. Carl, tomorrow is a weekend. I'm going to Osborne to study. Can you, pick me up then? Gwen looked at Carl courageously. Carl paused and said in surprise, go to study at Osborne Company. Gwen, you are so amazing. Ordinary people don't even have the qualifications to enter that company. As a world-class enterprise, Osborne Company is astounding in its scale. Because my original study direction is more biased towards biological genes, I can only get the qualification to study as Dr. Connor's assistant. I see. Carl nodded and gave a thumbs up. Student Gwen, I really can't see that you are still a super student. Being praised so much by Carl, Gwen's little face was flushed, and she was really a little shy. Your proposal, I agree, I will pick you up then, you should take the phone with you, right? Remember to answer my call. Then thank you Carl. Gwen smiled happily. After nightfall, there are fewer cars on the road, so it seems so quiet. Gwen walked slowly beside Carl and said softly. Carl nodded approvingly, he knew that Gwen was actively looking for a topic. So Carl also smiled and chatted with Gwen. It's just that the law and order in the city will become very poor after night. The two were chatting, and unknowingly came to a street that Carl was familiar with. Carl is familiar with this street because he has taught several gang members who wanted to collect protection money here before. I thought that the four gang members would not appear here. But Carl, with his super keen senses, soon noticed that something was wrong around him. There are quite a few people on this street today, but these people have basically been observing Carl and Gwen Stacy beside him. In other words, these people are all in the same group. Carl also saw the faces of the four gangsters whom he had taught at this time. There was a murderous intent in Carl's heart, these guys are really ignorant. The last time I let them go, it was Carl who just crossed over and was in a good mood. Not every time, he will be so lucky. Gwen, who was talking and laughing with Carl just now, 
also noticed Carl's abnormality, and asked with doubts, Carl, why did you stop suddenly? Several old friends I met a few days ago saw me, and they probably wanted to talk to me about old times. Friend, Gwen realized something was wrong. She looked around and noticed the situation on both sides of the street. There were at least a dozen people on both sides of the street she and Carl were on. But these people are dressed in sleek clothes, and they look like gangsters in NY City. Each of them has tattoos on their arms and arms, and Gwen can even clearly feel the malicious eyes these people are looking at her and Carl. Aware of these situations, Gwen also felt a sense of crisis in his heart. Carl, let's get out of here quickly. Gwen's heart tightened, even if Carl is physically strong and able to fight, but the opponent has a lot of people and might have weapons such as knives and guns in his hands, how can Carl handle it? No matter how high the martial arts are, they are afraid of kitchen knives. Gwen knew very well that if they didn't leave quickly, the two of them would be in danger. Please like and subscribe.